Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. This video is all about using Easter egg dies to dye paper. I'm going to show you all the techniques that I use to create different types of effects on paper. And we'll also talk about this beauty right here. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, let me show you my setup here real quick. I have my Easter egg colors. You only need about one to three colors. You don't need this many. I have a tray. I have an old towel. I have another tray. And of course, I've got my paper ready over here. I'm wearing an apron and I'll also be wearing gloves. Okay, so when it comes to Easter egg dyes, there's all sorts of different types and kinds and colors. And there's this, these kinds of things and marbling and neon and all sorts of stuff. There's also this pearl color, but this is actually a gel and then you kind of have to rub your eggs with it. That's not gonna work for paper. You definitely want something that's like a powder that you dissolve in water, or sometimes they even come in tablets. So what I have here are powders. These ones here are powders. I'm gonna choose some colors. So I've chosen a red, and I don't know if this is purple or blue, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go with these two colors, and the red is going to be my base color. So before I start to do anything, I'm gonna put gloves on. And I'm actually gonna double up because I've had purple and green and yellow fingers in the past because a glove breaks. So here we go, double gloved. Next thing I'm going to do is grab my die. I'm not even going to read the instructions or look at measurements or, you know, how much of this and that I need. I'm just going to just do whatever, put some powder in. I'm not going to use the whole bag. I don't think I need that much color. Now I'm going to pop some boiling water in there mix it up and at this point i can see how bright this color is and this is quite red i really don't need i can add more water and i really could have used less powder so you, you, all you need really is two different colors and it's going to last you a long time a lot of papers next thing i'm going to add it's not 100 percent necessary is white vinegar this is kind of acts like a mordant so that's why I'm adding it, but it's not, you know, you just need a splash, maybe a, a tablespoon or two, let's say. Just add it in there and you're good to go. Don't worry about little things. We're trying to keep it simple and straightforward. So as I mentioned before, I'm using a second color because I want like a merging of colors. And the way I'm going to apply the second color is in a spray bottle. You can also have your second color in like a glass like this. This is from my dyeing process yesterday. You can apply, you know, like you can do whatever you want. You can splash it on or you can use a spray bottle like I will. I usually keep all my sprays, you know, from skincares and stuff like that. And then I have it to use in projects like this. And really all I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of color inside the bottle. I'm not, we're not complicating things. We're just keeping it real simple. So no measuring. We're not even going to care about the vinegar or anything like that. Just pop some color in and now I'm going to add boiling water or just hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling water. And here's my color. It's just blue. I was hoping for purple, but looks like it's blue. So there we have it. My bottle has melted because I use boiling water, of course. So just stick with hot water when you're using plastic, flimsy plastic like this. Okay, so now we're ready to start. I'm gonna grab my first piece of paper and pop it inside the color and look at how beautiful this is. I'm just gonna pop it in both sides and let it drip a little bit. Put it on my towel. I don't have enough space, but I need to make sure you can see everything. I'm gonna pop my next piece in here already. And now going in with my spray bottle, 
I am going to spray my paper just like so and then scrunch it up. So this is the first method where you get the scrunched up. When you're scrunching it up, I like to go see how the paper is sitting wide and I kind of put my hand somewhere in the middle and scrunch it up to avoid tears. And this is the best way I kind of <laughs> worked out how to do it. Okay, next page, pop it down. Might as well pop my next page in. You can also scrunch, see that, and then spray. Now, if you have a few different colors, you can start adding, you know, see, I have this from yesterday. What's this one? This one's blue. They're all kind of blue, but you get the point. So we've sorted out the dipping into the dye process. So I don't have to show you this anymore. I'm going to come up a little bit closer and show you the scrunching process. All right, how's this? I'm going to spray and I've got a whole bunch of like liquid in there we don't need to go overboard with that and then i scrunch i'm kind of using really gentle hands because paper can rip and you probably will get a couple of rips and when i'm laying it into my tray i kind of take the scrunch up piece and i just place it on top another thing that you can do is just do your color let's say red scrunch up the papers put them down on the tray and then go in and spray Scrunch, 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 just like so. And you can see like there's a, there's quite a bit of pooling of color in there. You can get rid of it if you want to, like spill it out, but I just kind of just leave it in there and let it dry. All right, one last crunch. Here we go. And here are all of my papers. So as I said before, you can scrunch them all up and then you can go in with your color and spray on top like this. You can lift them and spray underneath. You know, if you, can't, you can't go wrong. You can't. So now what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to take it outside and let it dry. Another thing that you can do is when your papers are almost dry or semi-dry, like for example, these, these are my papers from yesterday, last night, and they're not completely dry, but they're not, you know, completely wet either. So you can see what's happening over here. So at this stage, what you might want to do is spray with another color. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to put a little bit a little bit of this red that I used today because that's way too much. Look how much red, you know, how many papers I can still color with this red. So I'm just going to pop it into my spray bottle and I'm going to spray these semi-dry papers. And the reason why you want them to be dry or semi-dry is because if you do it when it's completely wet, all the color merges together. But if you do it like now, that color will stay visible. Now, I don't know how smart it is to use red because it might look a little bit, you know, Halloween, let's say, but I'm doing it and I'm gonna pick up my piece and I'm gonna spray underneath. So with the drying process, I leave my stuff outside to dry. It's perfect if you have a sunny day, which I done today, but they'll hopefully be dry by tomorrow. In terms of the oven, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I haven't ever dried my papers in the oven. I just don't, it's not my thing. So it might be something that you want to try. Okay, I also have these two trays from yesterday and these papers are also almost dry. When I said I didn't use the oven, I, I kind of lied. I kind of didn't, but I kind of did. So I'll tell you what happened. This, this didn't go in the oven and it looks like this. This did go in the oven, but actually my husband made banana bread yesterday. And when it was done, the oven was, you know, still hot and I happened to be dying paper. So I put the tray into the hot oven and I left it in there. This is what happened. And I think the reason why it looks like this is because we had quick drying areas because this was all scrunched up like this. 
and we had paper that was sticking up and then we had all these pools of liquid inside the paper. So you had some areas that dried very, very quickly and then others that stayed wet. And that's why these kind of um, very defined areas that you can see. Well, that's what I love about this anyway. Like it depends on how hot the day is and how you dry your papers and if it's dried next to a heat out, look at that. So all of them are special in their own way. Now you might not like the scrunched up look these papers are from my yesterday's session and this is kind of what it looks like when it's crunched up and it might not be your thing i personally love it especially when you go in with a few different colors like i went in with yellow and then i sprayed with blue and then i scrunched up and then i left it outside in the sun and then i came in and i sprayed my third color which is what i've just shown you to do but this type of paper might not be your jam if that's the case the alternative is not scrunching up your pages. I don't know what happened there. We'll ignore that. Some of these turned out really well, some not so much. And I learned a thing or two. So what happened with these papers is I left them outside to dry and there was areas of pooled color. And now on second thought, I think that I don't like, I prefer more unified look like this. We'll come back to that. So when you let your colors pool, then you get this kind of, um, you know, th these kind of things, which you might like. And I mean, I'm still gonna use these papers, but I'm not a fan. So then when I realized that that's not looking all that good, I started really draining the paper, like waiting for, you know, all the liquid to kind of drip down and then misting colors on, like spraying the colors, but not pulling them like I did here. So then I started doing something like this. And then I get these beautiful kind of graduations, a little bit of color. I don't know, like what do you prefer? So there's that option. We're not scrunching up. We can let the colors pool like that and dry like that or not. Or we can have a perfectly uniform color like this one here, which is just a bit of pink and a bit of blue, which I mixed together because I had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then I just dyed the papers. I might now keep going with this because I have all of this red color left. And of course you can use this to dye your laces and your fabrics and all that kind of stuff too. But I'm just going to stick with paper for now. But I wonder what would happen if, let's say, I mop it up. I don't know. I'm just trying it out. Okay. Mm, it's not actually looking too bad. Maybe I'll spray a bit more. Okay, I'm going to do more of these because I like this effect and I'm going to try them laid out individually. Okay, and here we are. These are all done. They're all drying individually on top of this thing on a towel and these will dry pretty flat actually when they're done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I have a bit of this red color left and I also have this from yesterday and I'm just going to mix the two together and see what I get look at this and here we go i have some clothes drying some paper drying we've got scrunched up paper i've got some lace flowers and also some fabric here and i've used every last single drop of that dye bath that i had so i'm gonna let everything dry and then i'll come back and talk about some other stuff one last thing I want to show you that I'm going to do now is I'm going to use up all of these. I'm going to mix up all of the paints that I have in my spray bottle or bottles. So I have blue and red. Just mix them all up. Put my paper in as usual. I'm going to scrunch it up. And then... I'm going to place it on top of a different color. So this would look cool if I had like yellow down here and then now I'm placing blue or green on top. These two colors are quite similar, but anyway, it will still work like you get graduations of color and bleeding of color. And for the rest, because I ran out of space, I just stacked the papers on top of each other. I'm gonna let them dry like this. I also dyed some lace flowers, as you can see here and I have used up pretty much all the color that I have. 
And here we are, everything is now dry. I'm gonna take the papers out and show you how, what I do with them at this point, basically. You're just straightening them out like this. I just take them out one by one and start straightening. And look at beautiful colors. Look at this. All right, so this is what the papers look like at the moment. They're obviously very scrunched up and, you know, bulky. So basically what I do, I just lay some books on top, just like this, and leave them there for a couple of hours or overnight. And then they come out completely flat. And when I say completely flat, I mean relatively flat because we did scrunch up the paper, so it is gonna have some wave in it, if that makes sense. But, you know, this, this looks pretty good. Banjo, what's going on? Why are you cray-cray? Huh? What do you want, boy? I'm filming. You want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> you can also iron your papers, which I almost never do, but... I'm going to go and iron these just to see kind of the difference between ironed papers and papers that were under something flat. So I'll be right back. Look how dusty my iron is. Can you guess why? Okay, in terms of flatness of the paper, these are the ironed papers and these are the papers that were under something heavy. So, I mean, it's not, it's not really a huge difference, but anyway, there you have it. That's how you flatten them out. So I have to say, I am very, very impressed with these uh, papers, the red and the blue. I forgot what I used because it, this, the process I showed you was actually done yesterday. So I let this dry overnight just to make sure and look how beautiful this looks. I love the marbled effect the crinkled paper and all of that. I absolutely love it. I'm quickly going to go through the other papers. I'm not going to show you each paper individually. And then lastly, I'm going to show you a little project that I did with the Easter dyed paper. Okay, so all of these papers that I have here are all crinkled papers. So here we have yellow and blue and sprayed with pink. So that's how I got these variations. Then over here, look how beautiful this one is. Absolutely love it. Pink and blue and sprayed red. Like I don't even remember now exactly what I did because I was just experimenting. Look at this, how cool does that look? Beautiful. You know, I was just experimenting. I was spraying a little bit of this and that and scrunching it up this way and that. I think this is the one that dried in, in the oven. So you can see these uh, very definite lines uh, where the paper dried very quickly and you know not so I don't know why I'm, I yelled just then but you know you can see that uh, that's what happens if you dry your papers outside when it's a really hot day like 40 degrees celsius and they dry very quickly uh, you can get that kind of thing but then I don't know let's say papers like trying to find another example papers like this uh, it when it dries more gradually then you have less of this kind of defined lines not that any of this is uh, all that important but the beauty of this whole process is the fact that you get different results each time you do it and by the way if I haven't mentioned already you can do this kind of thing with food coloring as well then we have the red uh, one that i've just shown you i just want to point out the last thing that i mentioned in the process section when i said you scrunch up your papers and then you use a different color and when you scrunch up those papers you place them on top of the other papers and then you get kind of bleeds of color this is what happens so you can see on this one here my two major colors were blue and whatever this is purple and then i was putting scrunched up um, green paper on top of this paper and then we had all sorts of bleeding through right so we have green and then pink and over here a bit of blue so you know you can really get some really great results so you can see the difference here when 
I just did these two colors and I didn't place anything else on top. And then you can see here where, you know, I was placing other colors on top. And then look at this. I had a whole bunch of fun. I just love the colors and look at this. And the green and more blue. I have to say, out of all of these papers, the red that I did on camera today is my favorite, luckily. And also I love this one here and this one. And I'm not a huge fan of the yellow, even though the, the colors look really quite bright and beautiful. But there we have it. There's my crinkled up paper. These are my non-scrunched up papers that dried flat and they're quite flat papers. So this kind of goes a little bit more with, you know, books and stuff like that. So you don't get the fun effects. I mean, there are ways you can use shaving foam and all that kind of stuff to get a marbled effect on your paper. And it's quite nice when you miss coloring sections of paper. These are the very last ones that I did. I think when I mixed the colors, you know, look at that. And then we have this more brighter purple. You can see kind of the difference. And then we have the yellow and this on its own, it doesn't look that great to me anyway. But I think when it's part of a, a you know, an actual project or a journal, I think it's going to look good. There we have it. Those are my papers. And this is my yield. Oh, okay. How scrumptious does that look? And now I'm going to show you just, just for a little bit of inspiration. Oh, but I forgot to mention that these um, turned out quite nice. Actually, these were white flowers that I cut out from a large uh, tablecloth. And love it. I love how the colors you know just really like how this looks and i only did the purple and the blue probably should have done all of the colors bit of yellow bit of green a bit of red you know but anyway it was kind of like a last minute decision and this is what it looked like non-dyed so i think it really it just gives it life i think and it looks really nice in project this is mainly just to demonstrate which i'm uh, i'm sure that you already know that you can use the easter egg dyes to color your fabrics your laces your papers your oh just remembered now that i was saying that this is some cardstock that i had laying around that I was going to dye and by the way you will get different effects on different types of paper so this is kind of glossy so you can see the difference between how the colors took and the colors kind of the moisture pulled inward so you can see on all of them these lines around the edges you can see that because of the type of paper it's a glossy paper so it's not as absorbent as this type of thing. If you use watercolor paper, which is quite absorbent, then, you know, it's gonna look different. And yeah, so anyway, the types of paper that you use is also going to play a part. This is the project that I want to show you. I'll come back to that in a moment. I just wanted to mention, last week I did a video on these rainbow journals. If you haven't had a look, have a look now, because I think these papers look absolutely beautiful in this type of thing where we're using lots of color lots of whimsy and lots of kind of fun themes so i'll link that video 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 i'll link the video but this is the project that i wanted to share so i made a six signature journal and you can see from the open spine here that i used of course my easter egg dyed papers and look how beautiful. I mean, when they cut down, when they're part of a bigger project, part of something else, look at these, you know, colors and, and all that stuff. It just looks really beautiful. Now this one is not embellished yet, but it will be. And then look at this, like adding bright colors. I love how this looks. It just livens everything up. It looks beautiful. So let me know if you want to see a tutorial on this type of thing. I did promise to do a tutorial on painty papers. This is just one example that I have over here. And of course, all of these journals that you've seen last week or you haven't seen yet, but you will. These are all painty papers. And I did promise to do a tutorial and maybe I can do that next week. 
you'll have to let me know. But basically that's what I use for the cover here, just one of my painted papers and also on the inside, just two different. You know, it's awesome when you have a whole bunch of painty papers ready to go and then when you're making projects and you need something you know particular or something specific you have a stack of papers and you can make them very quickly so which is why i want to do a tutorial but you have to let me know should i do that next but i do have something else in mind something quite fun <laughs> that i want to do next i have so many ideas in my head and not enough time so that's the that's the issue i still have to do something on the front here. Make something work. That looks quite nice. Should I do that? I do like that. All right, so I need you to tell me and maybe you can write it in the comments down below. Well, that's the only way really that you can tell me. What would you prefer to see first? We have three options. Painty papers, which is, you know, all sorts of different painty papers. We can do a session together. Do you want to see this? open spine and binding next or do you want to see a surprise that i was supposed to that i was planning to do next week anyway let me know in the comments down below i can't fit all the goodness on screen but there we have it that's my easter egg dyeing paper dyeing process i hope you enjoyed it and you got lots of inspiration you can really get really really creative not just with coloring your pages and paper and, and creating different effects but then using the paper in your projects like i did here and just you know making a fun art piece let me know what you think give me more suggestions if you have any and also let me know about you know your preferences for what you want to see next in last video i spoke about how i made eight journals in one day these rainbow journals to be precise and the way that you can achieve something like that is when you have everything that you need ready so if we're using painty papers you have a whole bunch all you need to do is pull it out cut it down you can create a journal you have uh, folded pages ready to go like i did for all of these you have you know your colored pages ready to go you have a whole bunch of embellishments and i have a whole bunch of videos on creating embellishments and ephemera for your journals so that's how it's possible when you do this kind of thing you do it at one go, you have a whole bunch of colors. These, these papers are going to last me for the next, I don't know, two years. They're going to last me a long time. So, okay, don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much for being here with me today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.